In the game of golf, losing your ball to a water hazard is pretty frustrating. But one man saw an opportunity out of that frustration that has landed him and his company way above par. This is the story of Rawhide Golf Ball Company. My father was one of the original members of Rolling Hills Country Club. So the swimming pool was like a day daycare center for us, but uh, that all gets old after a while. And those ponds were just begging me to go out there and see what was in them. So I'd wade around the edges and get the golf balls out and sell them to the players. Well, then the golf pro caught me and uh, he says, I know your dad. Uh, so what we're gonna do is I'll give you a golf cart and you get the golf balls from me and I'll clean them and sell them to the players. I said, fine, that would be wonderful. Once I got my driver's license, I was able to travel to other golf courses in a 50 mile radius, uh, but I couldn't get to the bottom of the lakes because I didn't have the diving gear. So as a birthday present, my parents bought me the scuba tanks, the regulator, the, the, the wetsuit to keep me warm at the bottom. So I was able to get to the bottom and then all of a sudden there they were that I couldn't get to before. Mark went to college and got his degree in geology and worked in the petroleum business until a downturn in the oil industry prompted him to go into the golf ball business as a career. Mark soon realized he needed a more efficient method for retrieving golf balls. It was overwhelming for the diving side, so I learned a little bit about the mechanical side of getting them out using tractors, winches, and a roller disc that would roll across the bottom of the lake to recover the golf balls. So I found an operation in Chicago that did this mechanically, but I tried for about two years, but had to start developing a better method. So I started creating my own winches uh, to go behind a power source, which would be tractors in this case. I build rollers, which is the item that goes along the bottom of the lake to wedge the golf balls between the discs to go from one side to the other. So now I build these rollers for other companies as well nationwide. Using this method, Mark can get 90 to 95% of the balls out of the lakes. After the balls are harvested, they're brought back and placed into a chemical bath to remove dirt and minerals. They're scrubbed, rinsed, and sent through a conveyor to another building for sorting and grading. The balls receive a thorough inspection and are separated into the individual brands and graded into one of four categories. Roundup, Prime, Maverick, and Rowdy. Balls that are in the best condition, Roundup, are sold at half the price of new balls. The lower grades are sold for less. Only 30 to 50% of all balls harvested are in good enough condition to be resold in one of these categories. Balls not good enough to be resold to customers are striped in a special painting machine Mark developed to be resold as range balls to golf courses. So where did the name Rawhide come from? Rawhide Golf Ball, that was a very difficult uh, name to come up with for this company. When I was sitting there on the tractors rolling these ponds, the other tractor operator gets paid by the ball instead of paid by the hours. Once that roller stops, it's not making money. But when it's rolling across the lake, it's picking up golf balls and he's getting paid by the ball. That roller just keeps rolling. And the more it rolls, the more money I can make. Keep that roller rolling. And my wife was going, well, Mark, why don't you just call it rawhide? Keep that roller rolling rawhide. I said, done. The next time you're off your game and your ball ends up in the water, it's not gone forever. There's a good chance it'll have another life as a rawhide golf ball.